Hi there, I'm Amanda Cromhoed from Truth. Welcome to the Blind Loyalty Challenge. We interview world experts in loyalty blindly. We're hoping to create insight, spontaneity, and a lot of fun through the challenge. The challenge is about promoting the Blind Loyalty Trust and my book called Blind Loyalty, 101 Loyalty Concepts Radically Simplified. All profits from the book go towards the trust. We hope you enjoy the Blind Loyalty Challenge. So everybody knows how much I enjoy the Blind Loyalty Challenge, maybe because I'm sitting in this seat, but um, today it's going to be no exception. I'm really excited to chat to Shyam Shah, who is the CEO of Loyalty Juggernaut. So Shyam, you were nominated or tagged by Johan Mulman. Those who don't know, I'm sure most people know Johan. He's ex-CEO of eBucks and now at Sanlam Rewards. So it's so special to have you with us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Amanda, for having me. First of all, I'll thank uh, Johan for uh, tagging me. I think it's very nice of him. Uh, it's it's definitely an honor to be on your Blind Loyalty Challenge. It's been a it's been an institution in itself, and it's pretty interesting <laughs> for me. I, and I must say, very excited to be on the show. At the same time, I'm also very nervous. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what's coming my way, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. Nerves are a good thing, so everyone tells me. So let's go with that. So. Okay, so our first question, chapter 85 of Blind Loyalty, and I had the absolute privilege of meeting you personally and to give you a copy a couple of weeks ago when we met in Dubai. Brilliant. So chapter, 80, chapter 85, thank you, talks about loyalty fraud. What would you say is the single most impactful way of mitigating loyalty fraud? I think so. The, the loyalty fraud is genuinely a huge issue, and uh, you know, the there are there have been many attempts to, um, you know, um, detect fraud, um, which is you know after the fact when you when you you know analytically you find out that certain things that took place in the program did not look business as usual, uh, but detection can only do so much. Uh, you know, you need to have a lot more preventive, a lot more proactive ways to prevent frauds. The couple of things that I think given the tools and technologies that are available now uh, to all the brands, the couple of things that can be done really well, both in terms of preventing uh, frauds uh, before the fact, and also knowing about the frauds immediately as they take place. So uh, nowadays we have you know, uh, technologies in terms of AI, which really can look at every single instance of client engagement and assign some kind of credit score, or assign some kind of a credit worthiness score saying, you know, score, which will say whether that particular engagement is credible or not. Pretty much on the lines of how credit card companies have excelled in detecting frauds, right? Your, if your credit card spend is beyond certain limit, if the transaction is taking place at a location, which is quite unlikely that you would be at that point, at a particular point in time, uh, it also looks at the you know typical pattern of a consumer behavior. Now with the ability to crunch enormous amount of data with AI tools, it's possible to find those outlier engagements that can then be yeah. detected and then kind of kept aside for the arbitration so that you really know that every engagement, every transaction is genuine. So that is one part of you know using AI to um, identify potential frauds and then minimize those frauds. I think what will happen is those who are habitual fraudsters would also understand that these frauds don't get through. So there will be less attempt to you know, defraud the system as well. There is other approach uh, that we, you know, we, we use in our technology as well. We, we call it iSense, which basically looks at, you know, an aggregate pattern as to what happened in the last 30 minutes. It is, it is more of a uh, reporting or analytics by exception. It is not a mainstream analytics where you can have hundreds of KPIs, you're finding a needle in the haystack. Instead, this is analytics by exception where it says, look, we noticed that in the last 30 minutes, a particular promotion gave out six times more points than it typically does. There might be something wrong here, right? It could be a weekend, it could be a heavy, uh, you know, um, uh, shopper interest, it could be genuine, but at the same time, it keeps you informed in a, in a through, like I, like I like to call it, uh, analytics by exception. So I think these are some, some of the uh, approaches, strategies that the brands can look to adapt to minimize frauds. There is absolutely no silver bullet to it, Amanda. There is no way you can reduce fraud to zero. But I, but I think there is yeah. there is a very real possibility of bringing fraud to near zero, um, you know, as you adapt these new generation technologies. 
Amazing. I love that. There's no silver bullet. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I always say that if you design a loyalty program to have zero fraud, the customer experience would be so dreadful that no one would ever absolutely. sign up and never be able to use it. But I sense, how do you spell I sense? I, the letter I and sense. No, it is AI, is AI. Yeah, this it, so the ice is with this artificial intelligence. So it basically tells you that uh, you know uh, on a particular day, uh, you know on a particular at a particular time, this is what can be expected. So it it doesn't encumber the user to decide that threshold. The system predicts the threshold and then it checks the performance against the threshold. If it is too low or too high, it can be as simple as you know what is the uh, you know total breakage that you recorded on a particular day. If it is exceptionally yeah. high or exceptionally low. Maybe there is some operational issue in your loyalty program, right? So it is not just human committed fraud. It could also be the 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 inadvertent commercial uh, incident that is uh, because of the human error or because of some kind of yeah. misconfiguration, right? Ultimately, a loyalty programs is a banking system, right? And needs to be seen as such. <laughs> Brilliant. Great. Okay, my second question. You and I have had quite a few discussions around coalition programs. So what is your single favorite coalition program? Oh, well, my single favorite coalition program has got to be uh, Share Rewards uh, by Majid al Futem in the Middle East, uh, in, in UAE. Um, and there are, there, are, there are a few reasons why I really love this coalition program. In fact, I like to call um, you know, the coalition program has been a quite a standard industry term for it, but I like to call it an ecosystem loyalty. Um, the reason I love share rewards is that one of the core promises of ecosystem loyalty is that the value proposition is built singularly around the customer. It is not so much about what products and, and services and experiences that my, my company can bring to the table. It's about what Amanda as a consumer would love to receive as a value proposition. It's a true manifestation of brand's loyalty to the customer, right? In, in, in return, expecting customer's loyalty back to the brand. I think if you look at share rewards, it's conceived with that ethos that we want to deliver great moments to the customers throughout their day, throughout their month, throughout their engagement life cycle. And if you look at the range of uh, benefits it offers, it's, there is something in it for everybody, right? I have, you know, they have uh, co-branded credit cards. They use a brilliant mobile-based payment where it's a frictionless way to earn and redeem points. Um, they have every, you know, there is there is participation from every vertical practically. There, is shopper, uh, there, is a, there are shopping malls, fashion retail, grocery hypermarket, leisure entertainment, cinema theaters. I can pretty much have a rewarding experience for everything that I do, uh, you know, in my day-to-day -day lives. They also have, if, if that range is not just good enough, they also have partnerships with airlines where I can exchange my points into miles and buy a free award ticket. Also have tip and tip out relationship with the leading telco loyalty program there. So I can even have the flexibility to, you know, leverage my reward currencies in a manner that gives me the maximum value. I, they have a relationship with travel OTAs, relationship with the, uh, you know, uh, a gaming casino kind of a company. So I think it's pretty much the kind of, it, it's it's like a multi cuisine buffet. There is something in it for everybody. And then it has the <laughs> layer of personalization layered on, on top of that. So that's definitely a very pioneering attempt of, of a coalition program that really caters to true blue lifestyle value proposition. Wonderful. You've got a wonderful way with words. I'm writing these words down like a pioneering attempt and a buffet of, of reward options, which is just beautiful. Thank okay, you so my last question. My last question. And um, your first question, actually, the, about fraud, you talked on talked about KPIs so it's one of my favorite subjects so chapter 94 in blind loyalty is completely focused on loyalty KPIs what would you say is the most strategic KPI that executives should be watching well so I think my my, my view on KPI Amanda is that I think uh, if all executives need to look at two things one is that what is the life cycle stage of the loyalty program for example if I'm if, if I launch a brand new loyalty program I'm not necessarily looking to drive revenue out of it. I'm looking to maximize my customer acquisition. I'm looking to build a strong data foundation for my enterprise and then start to liberate the data foundation to then benefit from it. So I think depending on the stage at which the loyalty program is, my KPIs would potentially change. In fact, one of the things that loyalty program executives should look at is, is they should actually revisit their KPIs every six months. 
right? Because their circumstances, their competitive landscape, and their loyalty program life cycle has evolved. So, uh, you know, so for example, if I'm a if I'm a very matured loyalty program with you know enormous amount of data assets, I could look to you know at the at the very far end of maturity, I could look to monetize the, those insights. I could look to bring in partnerships. I could look to you know create some kind of synergistic alliances. Um, I should look to leverage data for retail media type of thing. So I think at that point it becomes quite uh, monetary in nature. The KPIs could be okay. Here's where the 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 loyalty value cycle kind of closes the loop where we invest a lot in loyalty and now we are we are looking at ROI in monetary terms. But through the journey of loyalty program evolution, like the KPIs need to evolve all the way from customer acquisition to customer engagement to customer retention and ultimately customer advocacy right so from acquisition to advocacy yeah. the kpis can can go across the range so i think there is one great kpi in every stage but that's not the same kpi i think that's perhaps the point i'm trying to make <laughs> one great kpi in every stage i love that all right perfect full colors so shyam who would you like to tag to do the blind loyalty challenge next well, I would love to tag someone that I that I really admire uh, and have learned a lot from every time I listen to the, this person speak at the events, conferences, or even one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's always a learning experience. It's it, it's an experience where I feel that, you know, this is the right space to be in. And uh, that person is uh, Dr. Najib. Uh, Dr. Najib is the Divisional Senior Vice President of Skywards. Uh, it's an iconic loyalty program. All of us are members of it. Uh, you know, who's, who doesn't love Skywards? So I would <laughs> definitely love to tag Dr. Najib. It'll be, you know, it'll be my honor to really, you know, um, uh, see him on this show. And I'm pretty sure, you know, he'll be, you know, a, a tremendous guest for you, Amanda. Amazing. I quote Dr. Najib in Blind Loyalty, and I had the honor, like yourself, to meet him. I mean, I know you've known him before, but I personally met him as well in, in Dubai recently. So um, to give him a copy of where he's quoted so hopefully he'll take up the challenge and uh, we can try try our best to catch him out a little bit but I think that'll be difficult but anyway thank you so much for doing this I absolutely love chatting to you and thanks for doing the blind loyalty challenge likewise thank you so much Amanda I appreciate it I can tick this item off my bucket list now <laughs>